Hi everyone, I hope you're having a fantastic day. I am so excited to be creating many more tutorials for you, so if you want to request anything, please make sure to comment down below. Today I'm going to show you how to draw three kinds of mountains and three kinds of trees. You can use these drawings in your bullet journal or anywhere your heart desires. Before we begin, I do want to mention that if you're interested in how I find inspiration or want to see a behind the scenes to my illustrations, even if you're not into journaling, please check out my last video. The link is in my description and in the upper right hand corner. The first mountain is inspired by the ones I've seen in traditional Chinese paintings and by ranges of the Yellow Mountain, also in China. They are flat compared to what we normally associate with mountains, but this is proof that mountains have so many variations. Start off with the top outline after you've determined the placement by penciling in a rectangle the size you want your mountain to be. For all of these drawings, I'm starting off the same way with pencil to make sure I like the size and look of it before I start inking. Don't worry too much about following my lines perfectly as long as they are a little rough and have some peaks. Now go through and add vertical lines on the peaks or wherever you want there to be shadow. Add in outlined areas to be filled in, representing the different levels of rocks. Put in some additional shadows wherever you want and add in more rough lines and you're pretty much done. If you're wondering how I decide where to put the shadows, here's a little example. Mainly the shadows are determined by your imaginary sun. So if the sun shines on your right, then the shadows should mostly be on the left. The best way to understand the concept is to take a flashlight and shine it on an object and mess around with the angles of it. With mountains, since they are made up of many uneven areas, you can get away with adding in more shadows whenever and wherever you want, and you can make it up as you go. So play around with it and remember to have fun with it. The second mountain is inspired by the Teton Ranges as part of the Rocky Mountains. These have very pointy peaks versus the flatter ones in China. Again, start off with the top line determining the peaks, and then where the peaks are, add in your semi-vertical lines and areas where you think may have shadow. For now, you can follow along with me to get the hang of it, but I am pretty confident you guys can eventually start making up your own mountains. Add in your diagonal lines, making sure that they are somewhat similar in direction to create the dimension. A little tip for this part is that the lines do not need to be the same length. Mess around with shorter and longer diagonal lines to indicate where the shadows are darker and where they are a little lighter. And you can also go back and add in another layer of lines to make the darker shadows even darker. The third mountains have more subtle peaks than the first two, but you can draw these the same exact way as the first two. Start off with a top outline to determine your peaks and then go from there, using your creative intuition to design the mountain ranges the way you want. Experiment with the placement of your shadows, details, and outlines to see what works and what doesn't. The beauty and joy of drawing mountains is that it doesn't take much to make them look good, so make sure you keep your pen and pencil loose and draw how you feel. Next, I have three different styles of trees that you can use depending on if you want them more stylized or simplified, decorative or realistic. The first tree is very simplistic. Start off with the center line and then add an arrowhead to the top, and then more arrowheads down along the center line, making them larger as you go. Play around with adding in thicker lines if you want to make it a little bolder. The second tree is a little more decorative. Start off with the same center line and then add in random lines and extensions of those lines to form branches from the center line. Finish off with different size circles on the tips of the branches and anywhere else you want to fill in the tree. Experiment with this one by adding in leaves or flowers or any other shapes that you want. And then finally, the last tree is a little more realistic mainly using diagonal lines and scribbles to build the details of the branches, making them slightly larger as I go. 
The one thing I love about drawing and art in general is that there is so much freedom in creating. Yes, there are realistic, accurate drawings, but you can also choose to be unique and make trees out of triangles or circles, or even turn a leaf into a tree and put those into a landscape. When I first started out, there was this need to be accurate, but as I kept creating, I realized that I had so much more fun expressing my imagination into reality. Why draw what a photograph can capture when the only thing that can capture your vision is you? So don't be afraid to push boundaries and create. I wanted to show you how you can use these drawings in an actual ink drawing, just to give you an idea of how they would look and give you some ideas for how to piece them together. Think of all these tutorials as pieces of a puzzle, and it's up to your imagination to create the whole puzzle. Every drawing, every painting, every bullet journal setup all start with a simple shape or line, and then it's built into something unique to you, and that makes it a masterpiece. So here I've created some pointy mountains to set my scene and am adding in realistic trees to the rolling hills. Since they are smaller, I just scribbled in the shapes of the branches, not very worried about defining each branch, but making sure that the overall shape still looks like a tree. The two fields are separated by a strong but calm stream flowing towards the viewer, and all of the scene is encased in a simple, leafy crescent wreath, creating a very serene landscape purely from my imagination. I hope that this tutorial helped you to find a little inspiration and helped you with your journal setup, stickers, or anything else you'll want to create. Remember to check out my behind the scenes video and come join me on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching and I sincerely hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time. Bye!